We joyfully welcome you to the Free Methodist Church of Santa Barbara for our Christmas Eve service as we celebrate together the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For each Sunday of Advent, we have lit a candle, and tonight we light the Christ candle. So please prepare your hearts for worship as the Juan family leads us in the call to worship. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has, did not overcome it. En el principio ya ex existía el verbo, y el verbo estaba con Dios, y el verbo era Dios. <laughs> él estaba con Dios, y él, el principio por medio de él todas las cosas fueron creadas. Sin él nada de lo creado llegó a existir. En él estaba la vida, y la vida era la luz de la humi, humanidad. Esta luz resplandece en las tinieblas, y las tinieblas no han podido extinguirla. Each week in Advent, we have lit a candle to mark the days until this special night when we come to the manger. This evening, we light all the candles along with the one in the middle of our wreath. This is the Christ candle. It represents the light that Jesus brought when he was born as a baby. As we celebrate his arrival into our world, we ask for the Lord to brighten our hearts with his loving presence. Christ the Savior is born. Let us pray. Jesus, you are the light of the world. We celebrate you this Christmas Eve and ask for you to meet us as we gather in your name. You are the Messiah who has come to offer God's love to everyone. We give you praise. Thank you for inviting us to be part of your life. Amen.
In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. How can this be, since I am a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration, and was taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn.
In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph, with the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them.
website Seedbed by the author Matthew Leroy and it was so profound that we decided to use it this year. It's a short reading. Members of our congregation will be reading it and the words will be on the screen and I encourage you to read along or to close your eyes and just soak in um, what it is that's being said about Christ our Lord. 
This is a small moment when we hold our breath as the fate of the world stands at a tipping point. Where ancient truth meets wonder. Where the promise you saw coming catches you by surprise. Where the waiting gives way to fulfillment. Where certainty is filled with mystery and mystery is anchored in certainty. This is the moment when seas split open and a way is made. When the impossible comes within reach, when giants start to stumble. When chains break and slaves walk free. When empires flinch and a kingdom arises. This is the moment when eyes open. When lips sing. When legs dance. When hearts heal. This is the moment where the God of Abraham and Isaac, of Moses and Elijah, of David and Jesse, becomes the God of Mary and Joseph, and of you and me. This is the moment when the God of fire and flood, of holiness and love, of justice and mercy, of miracles and might, becomes flesh and blood. This is the moment of Emmanuel, God with us. When the one who fills up every corner of existence is now cradled in a manger. When dawn overcomes the night and love overthrows sin. When a baby takes his first breath and gives creation a second chance. And the, and word, the word became, became flesh, flesh and made his dwelling among us. us. When Mark and I were first married, we would often go see our families. This is so often the rhythm of young couples who live relatively close to where they grew up. One year, we counted that between the Hurleys and the Bates, we saw our families 13 times. We cut down a little bit after that. We were reminiscing this week about our visits, in particular to see Mark's family up north. Sometimes because of work, we couldn't leave Santa Barbara until pretty late into the evening. And because it's 300 miles away, it meant that we would arrive kind of late. No matter what time it was though, whether it was midnight or two in the morning, his parents would be up waiting for us. The house would be ablaze with lights and we wouldn't even get to the door before it was flung open and they were there with smiles and hugs and we're so glad you're here. They were so glad to see us. Everything was ready for us. They would help us with our bags. They would tell us, um, are you hungry? Do you want anything to eat? And then even if it was really late, they wanted to sit down and they wanted to talk. How was your trip? How are you doing? What's going on? Let us tell you the latest about what's going on for us. It didn't matter if we were going to be there a long time and we would have plenty of time to talk. They wanted to sit down and do it right then. On our Advent journey to the manger, tonight we are talking about arrivals. We have come to our destination. The road ends at a familiar place where there is an abundance of love. And the Savior is thrilled that we are here. We arrive at a place where we are hugely known. And we are loved beyond anything we have experienced or can even fathom. He wants to hear how hard your year has been and the griefs that you've carried. He wants to hear what you hope for and what you long to see happen in the world. He wants to celebrate all of our good news because we belong to him. He has made us and we are part of his life. He wants to talk and tell us how he sees things. He's also been waiting, just like we've been waiting, he's been waiting for us to ready our hearts to receive him this Christmas night. Sometimes when we go on a trip, 
We're sad when the travel part is over and we've come to our destination. This might be because there's such fun that can happen on the way, joyful surprises and random happenings. It may also be that sometimes we don't feel entirely ready for the arrival. That we haven't prepared enough emotionally or we just want more time to soak in what's going to happen when we get there. I think Advent can often feel this way. We intentionally start on our journey and we say we're going to worship and we're going to find meaning in the season and we're going to have times of contemplation and prayer and sometimes the time just goes by so quickly. And there's so much maybe that we need to get done that the arrival can feel anticlimactic or still stressful. Maybe we're just so tired. Maybe it's a letdown. But here we are at the manger. Christmas is upon us. And I encourage you this night to let go of the expectations of what you thought it should be even maybe what you wanted it to be. Just enjoy this time with the Savior who welcomes you home, the one who has invited you to be here. Open your eyes and see that he is here and wants to connect with you. Jesus is what's important. The one way that our reading tonight encouraged us is to remember that this is an important moment that we come yearly and God meets us in. We centered ourselves somewhat in Advent on the time of our arrival. We've talked about mapping out our plan and how Jesus was born into a family and welcomes us into his. We explored what happens when the unexpected occurs and what's on our spiritual road trip playlist. All of these things are part of the journey, yet the arrival is not about a place, it's about who's there. We're different people than when we came last year and maybe even a bit different from when we started Advent. Jesus' birth changed everything about the world. The risen King who grew, who grew up paid a ransom for our sins and he's here to surround us with his peace and salvation. There's comfort here this evening. There's always a welcome for us. No matter where we've been or how long we've been away, nothing can keep us from the Lord's love as we meet together and bring him glory with people from all over the world trying to bring him honor. You know, it's a funny thing about Mark's parents. Their excitement never wavered. Maybe I thought that it would. That one night we would arrive and everything would be dark. That they would be asleep and there would be a note on the door reminding us to lock up after us. But that never happened. They were always up and always filled with joy. Always glad to see us. God is delighted that you are here. He wants you to know that this is your home with him, a home that never changes, where a place is always prepared for you with him. His love for you is constant. Tonight, as we celebrate the love that Jesus expressed for all of us at the cross, we want to take time for communion. We take communion as we celebrate his birth because we recognize that it is his death and resurrection that makes the nativity a meaningful story at all. So we take the bread that symbolizes his body and the juice that symbolizes his blood and we recognize that those things were given for our sins. He was punished on the cross for all the wrong that we do and all the wrong done to us. And our celebration tonight is a recognition of that sacrifice. As we take the elements, our Savior who was born in a humble stable meets us as our exalted King. You don't have to be a member of this church or any church to take communion with us. Everyone is welcome in God's house. We simply ask that you do so reverently as you acknowledge that taking communion is an act of confession 
and adoration to Jesus, our Savior. We now will read the liturgy together. This is the invitation to communion. Come to the Lord's table, all you who love him and seek his light. Come to the Lord's table, confess your sin. Come to the Lord's table, be at home, be at peace. Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we hide our heads in trivial matters. We do not love our neighbors because our ambitions are more important. We do not hear the cry of the needy because we are busy accumulating wealth. As we have pursued our own power, we fail to put our trust in you. Forgive us, we pray. Free us that we may have eyes to see your glory, ears to hear your liberating gospel, and lives to devote to the service of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Emmanuel, God with us, is coming that we might live our lives in the grace that frees us from the bondage of sin. He has come to be our light, and when we confess our sinful ways, God abundantly pardons. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Together. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Almighty God, in the fullness of time, you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. And at his birth, the angels sang glory to you in the highest and peace to your people on earth. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and after he had given thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup. After supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. And so, in remembrance of of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering to us as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has come among us. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ abides with us. Christ will come again. We invite you now to take the elements. Although we're not together as we normally are as a congregation in the sanctuary, we know that whenever God's people gather together in his name, he is there and we celebrate Emmanuel, God who is with us. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has never been able to put it out. Tonight, we celebrate the moment that the God of all creation became the light of the world. On this holiest of all nights, we rejoice in the love that compelled him, that shows us how much we have in the Lord. Tonight, I invite you to turn off the lights in your house to light your candles as we sing joy to the world. And as we light the candle, I want you to focus in on the light, to recognize the light that Jesus has brought to us, and to think about the light that he has brought you, the light that's brought you home again and again this year. Heaven and 
benediction this evening comes from a pastor named John Armstrong who wrote this for his own church's Advent celebration years ago. May you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the magi, and the peace of of the Christ child. May the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and always. Amen. Merry Christmas. <laughs>